You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that, just like Baby Yoda, has been cancelled for eating too many eggs. <laughs> I'm Cody. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. And I'm Samantha. We have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, but first let's talk about some things we have been checking out. Check it out! (laughs) Well, you said a Star Wars, so I had to play a Chewbacca. Yeah, I did. Yep. (laughs) All I mean, right. Have you guys watched the the Mandalorian? Yeah. I have not gotten. Uh, I've not cracked uh, season uh, two yet. I need to. I need I to get wa- on that. I watched the the, two, the first two episodes. Yeah, that's all that's out right now, and we we're caught up. So okay. Well, you guys go ahead and talk about it. I mean, I'll get caught up over the weekend. By the time our gentle listeners are listening to this, I will probably have been caught up to it. So go ahead. It's it's cool. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say other than it's been really, really good. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, first episode, we go back to Tatooine again. Again. <laughs> which which I was initially worried, but I think they did better this time around. Oh, yeah. It didn't feel as ham-fisted. As <laughs> Especially since they're kind of, uh, they're kind of tapping that, uh, the EU well again. Yeah, there was actually just some direct Knights of the Old Republic stuff. Oh, nice. And uh, Amy Sedaris's character came back, and she's great, so that's good. <laughs> she's been in both episodes, actually. Really? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. So, so what's this thing about uh, Baby Yoda eating eggs or something? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I guess people are awfully mad, because in the second episode, the kind of uh, the plot device or the driving force of the whole episode is... Mandalorian is a taxi service, and he's uh, he's been contracted to drive this frog lady to the next system over, so her and her husband can continue their family line with this backpack fish tank full of eggs she's got. Oh, yeah, okay. She she's got a backpack full of unfertilized eggs that she has to take to her husband. Okay, I can kind of see where this is going. And, uh, yeah, B- Baby Yoda thinks, hey, those look pretty good to eat. Hey, free snack. Yeah. More like free snacks. Yeah, he eats at, l- at least four or five of those things. Oh, jeez. <laughs> at least he doesn't <laughs> like, eat all of them. Like, so, like some people were calling it uh, Baby Yoda in the Forbidden Boba Tea. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do look like little Boba. <laughs> Uh, bubble tea bobas. Yeah, so I guess we should probably like talk about the, the two episodes separately instead of just mishmashing everything together. <laughs> so in the first episode, like the whole point of um, Mando going back to Tatooine is he's trying to find more Mandalorian. Since the the covert or whatever got broken up on the one planet he was on, he's gotta find him again. And now they'll he- they'll point him in the way of uh, where Baby Yoda lives, I guess. Or needs to go, or whatever. Yeah. And so this guy tells Boba, there's a Mandalorian on Tatooine. Which, you know, fans have known that since, you know, 1986 or whatever. I was going to say, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure there is at least one Mandalorian somewhere on or in, possibly, Tatooine. So he he goes back, lands back at the spaceship mechanic lady and he points him in the direction of a, of a little town and he goes to the he goes to the, the inn or the tavern or the bar or whatever you want to call it cantina and he's like well i'm looking for a mandalorian and, and the bartender guy's like well maybe you need to talk to the marshal and he turns around and there is boba fett standing there oh really oh wow they're dropping Except that it, in it's not really oh it's not okay it's Tim- Timothy Elephants. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. And he's wearing Boba Fett's armor. <laughs> mm, gotcha. Okay. 
So is that kind of the main thrust of the first episode is going to this town and you see a fake, fake DeLorean? <laughs> well, yeah, they, they, te- they team up with sand people who are characterized really well. I've like, I heard about get, that. Well, with the uh, um, modified uh, American Sign Language, right? Yeah, it's really cool. They really treat the Tuscan Raiders in a in an interesting way that maybe the other movies haven't really. Yeah, kind of yeah, interesting the movie- that they treat them here like that. And then, if you think back to what Attack of the Clones, yeah, <laughs> Anakin maybe wasn't quite as cool a dude. Yeah, I mean. Even even Mando himself goes like, "Look, I understand they are a, they are a savage, hard people, but they live here too." Oh, okay. Like, they're, like, they're, like there's no like saying they're they're they're, they're not mm. like they are raiders. They are mm. they do raid areas, but they live in the the awful list of desert, so they don't really have a choice. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, well that's that. I I kind of see him as like the indigenous people of Tatooine. I was just going to say it's it's almost like it sounds like this episode is very uh uh American western uh inspired because you have the town yes. with the sheriff, the corrupt sheriff and you have the indigenous people. Well, he's, not, he's he's not he's not corrupt, but he's clearly being something he's not by is is he like posing posing? Is Amanda He's a, As a he, Mandalorian, yeah. yeah, he is. So, and at least in that case, he is, you know, at, at least not he on the level. That trope, yeah, I he think. fits the trope. But no, this is actually a pretty stock standard kind of Western, um, like storyline. But I, but I think, but it sounds like it works. It sounds like it worked for, uh, for oh yeah, this episode. So that's awesome. And there's a giant crate dragon that's awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. All right. Yeah, we actually finally see a crate dragon. Nice, nice. And at first, I thought it was like a sandworm from Dune. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, they could get one of those teeth off of it and make a pretty good Chris knife. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to talk about like the, the end episode kind of stinger thing? Oh yeah, we we saw somebody walking around in the desert eyeballing that that uh, Boba Fett armor that Mando has now. Oh. And it, it was probably Boba Fett. It was probably Boba Fett, yeah. Like, he turns around, and it's straight up... Um, the guy who played Jango. The guy, yeah. okay. That's... I was just gonna say, the guy who played Jango, or possibly Aquaman's dad. Tamara Morrison? Yes, that's the guy. Yeah. T- Tony... Tony Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Morrison. <laughs> Jim Morrison walking through the desert, hoping to find some Mando armor. No. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. I knew he was going to show up. I, I knew Boba Fett was going to play a fairly large part in this season. I didn't think they were going to introduce it this early, I guess. Well, that's all that's all they've really done. I mean, we don't know if he's going to come back or if it was just this one bit or what. I'm sure he's going to come back for multiple bits. It's Boba Fett. Come on. Oh, there's a re- Everybody there's a really loves the Fett man. Where um Mando and fake Boba are shooting at the crate dragon and stuff. And Mando's like, well, uh, protect the kid. And he hits and he hits the backpack with his rifle and sends him shooting off. Kind of like how Han did in return of the Jedi. Oh, nice. Oh, also he uses that stupid backpack missile. Oh, he does finally. Oh, that's excellent. Excellent. He does it like twice. (laughs) He has to bend over when he uses it, and it looks so stupid. But like at the same time, like I don't know, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it looked just like in the game uh, Masters of Terrace Cassie when you unlock oh. Boba Fett and you use oh, the missile. Oh God! It, like, it looks the exact same. Oh, don't remind me of Masters of Terrace Cassie. Oh, oh my you God. didn't like that game? Oh God, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh, that okay. Masters of Terror Kasai was a fighting game that was yep. developed for the Star Wars uh, IP, and it was janky and ugly and terrible. And not like the good jank, not like the fun jank that you play because it's broken and go, oh, can you believe this this 27 hit combo? Because 
They didn't uh, they didn't fix the uh, hitbox on this one attack. No, it's just like it doesn't work. Everything is janky. <laughs> Nothing works. It's not like so bad it's good like Castlevania Judgment. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Don't get me started on <laughs> the Castlevania Judgment. That is also that is just so bad it's good though. I I do. Yeah. There's And it has fun character designs, I think. Yeah, that helps. That helps it for sure. Mando episode 2 picks up where, you know, Mando's going back to Mos Eisley or whatever, and that's when uh what's her face lady, the mechanic lady tells her about, well, if you do this, we be able to find you more Mandalorians, yada yada. You just got to transport this frog lady who Mando can't talk to. He doesn't speak frog. Yeah. Also, she has a Yoshi tongue and just kind of looks like a realistic Yoshi. Oh, wow. That's what I thought when I first saw her. I'm like, that's just like a real Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mando's mad because he, he can't go into light or hyperdrive because it'll kill the eggs. Oh, okay. So, so, the, so it has got, to go the long way around, kind of. Way. Yeah. So then as they're putting through space or whatever, two X-Wings show up and start harassing Mando a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then they realize that he is the same. It's the same ship that attacked that New Republic uh, prison ship in the first season. Mm. And it turns into a real epic uh, space chase. Oh, cool. That sounds really awesome. So these are coming out on uh, on Fridays. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Friday. Well, very awesome. Yeah. I'm I, again, I'm hoping to get caught up on all of it this weekend and uh, hopefully we'll continue to cover the show as, as for the next couple of weeks because it's because they're doing another uh, limited uh, limited run, right? It's not like a full it's only like 10 episodes, eight or 10 episodes. Yeah, I feel like it's like, yeah, eight or 10. Yeah. And that's perfect. That's actually a perfect amount for the series. I was worried that they weren't going to stick it again. I figured like we got lucky and the first one was really good. And now that everybody's got their eyes on it, they're going to have a hard time pulling out a second season that's as good. But no, it picks up just right at the same level that the first season st- left off. So, yeah, it's you know, good. I, you know, I'm not I'm not going to get worried about it until the fourth season, because by the fourth season, probably most stories, if they've if they've kept the, uh, Baby Yoda and they're still looking for where baby Yoda goes after four seasons, then there might be an issue. (laughs) Also, like, I love how, like, being Mando, he still gets, like, his butt kicked or his shit messed up in a really bad way, like, all the time. Like, he's not, like, this infallible death machine. That makes the character believable and likable. Uh, I could talk about the one thing I kind of uh, did. This was a couple weeks ago. Uh, studio, We've talked about Studio 35 doing bad movie nights in the past. They kind of had to take a break because of COVID and finally got were able to get back down to see one. Uh, this was the Friday. It would have been the 30th, so it would have been the day before uh, Halloween. And it was great. They played the movie Hacko Lantern. Which is, <laughs> oh man, it is so corny, so cheesy. It has to deal with this small town and this old guy who I guess everyone just knows is the leader of a satanic cult, but also they they buy pumpkins off him. And he's not <laughs> like, and I mean, he's creepy, but he's not like, I'm going to get you later, creepy. It's just like, no, that's the only place they can get pumpkins. That's old man Johnson. Yeah, you know, great pumpkins, kind of a Satan worshiper, but, you know, otherwise. And the whole thing is uh, he... Poe Buddy's nerfic. Poe Buddy's nerfic. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We all have our things, you know. But uh, but the whole thing is the guy's grandson was kind of marked to become like the new leader of their cult. And you see a flashback, the first 20 or so minutes of the movie. Uh, he's a kid and the grandpa's like, hey, I got some some special necklace for you to hang on to until you're ready. And then it cuts to present day or the 80s, I guess. And the guy's kind of pathetic. He's just a weird metalhead that lives in his mom's basement. Like, like you do. <laughs> yeah. But like, 
for it being a slasher horror movie, there are only three kills and they're pretty tame. The one thing I will say is it very much is Halloween themed. Like it takes place on a Halloween. There are pumpkins everywhere. A large portion <laughs> of it takes place at a at the town Halloween dance. Like the <laughs> wildest, the wildest dance in Podunk, Kansas I've ever seen committed to film <laughs> because there 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 was a stripper that went full nude in this weird like church basement Halloween party that had nothing to do with like the, 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 the cult stuff. This is just some party. This is regular townie stuff. This is just regular townie <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And of course it's bad movie night. So they, they chopped it all the heck and they added a bunch of explosions and they added a bunch of dumb stuff here and there. And it really just made it really, really enjoyable. Uh, the other thing that I did also movie related on Halloween night itself, uh, Jordan and I went to the Ontario Spring Mill Drive-In. It was the last night they were going to be open for the season. And they played three classic, like the Universal Classic movies. We watched the original Dracula, the original Frankenstein, and the original Wolfman up on the big screen. Nice. It That's was rad. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I love those movies. I forget how slow they can be at times, but they looked excellent up on the sc- up on the big screen. They sounded great. They they still hit. They still hit and they were still great. I loved it. It was super enjoyable. Highly recommended. I think oh, Wolfman good. is the only one of that set I haven't seen. Wolfman is eh. If <laughs> if I were the one running the, the box office that night, I would have probably put Wolfman in the middle. I would have started with Frankenstein and ended with Dracula because Wolfman is definitely the weakest of the three. And by the end of the night, Wolfman, uh, we were watching Wolfman and we just kind of decided halfway through to leave because <laughs> it, it's really slow. It's, it's a lot of, I mean, the the spectacle of that movie was look at a man turn into a wolf man on screen with the uh, time lapse effects, which in the thirties was a big deal, but the and story now looks very silly. <laughs> oh, it looks incredibly silly now, but in that mindset, it was impressive, but the plot is a lot of, Oh no, I may be the wolf man. Stay away. I'm I, I'm a wolf man for 90 percent. And then he turns into a wolf man and, and runs through the woods or something. If I was in charge of that billing, I would have replaced it with creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes, that would have been a really good one. I would have I would have as well. That would have been excellent. Or do a do a, a triple feature of Frankenstein movies. Give me a bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, that would have been good, too. Frankenstein holds up really well. It's it does. Still really good. Oh, yeah. And so does Dracula. Dracula still holds up. There's a scene in which uh, Van Helsing and Dracula are having like a battle of wits where they're just kind of talking back and forth to each other. And I don't know, like you can feel you can feel the energy between the two actors when it's. Van Helsing is going, I knew you were a vampire from the time I first laid eyes on you. We will, we will stop you. And Dracula going, I could, I can come over there and just end you right now, but I would rather see you humiliated. So I'm going to keep doing my thing and you're just going to have to deal. That is exactly what they said. (laughs) It's word for word. Yep. Dracula is like, hey, Van Helsing, put up or shut up. But uh, did we talk about the Bram Stoker's Dracula? I don't think uh, so. Because we did watch that over Halloween. Oh, you did? Was, it's okay. It's very good. It's really good, I right? It is. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. also, Gary Oldman's a great actor, though. Yeah. Everybody was pretty good in it, except for maybe Keanu Reeves. Yeah, that was kind of the era where Keanu Reeves was. In his brain, he was still Ted from Bill and Ted, but he was trying to, like, branch out. He hadn't been Neo yet. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I am Jonathan Parker. (laughs) You must be Count Dracula. 
all the set design has is like that crazy like 90s big budget real set oh, design that you yeah. never see anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was just saying, like the Batman movies have it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And what I was going to say is what I like about it is it is a pretty faithful adaptation of the 1930s Dracula. Like a lot of the same or very similar kind of scenes take place in that in a similar progression to the original. Like it's it's a lot clo- it's pretty close. It's pretty close as far as adaptations go. Yeah, I mean versus where you have like, you know, between like the Boris Karloff mummy and the and the 99 mummy where there are two totally different films completely different films but they kind of had to do that because well the original mummy was kind of boring as well oh it's crazy boring (laughs) yeah oh yeah yeah but it's a different i mean it's a different kind of film like it's like a it was a different time it was a different psychological horror sure sure and and they the all of these were kind of more psychological horror kind of but uh, yeah the mummy was just man (laughs) the original mummy the new the yeah Frasier's I'm making it through the original mummy. Yeah. Frasier's the mummy is good. I like that one quite Brand- a bit. Brendan Fraser, not <laughs> Niles, come here. Niles. <laughs> good lord, this, Niles. This Why are you covered in scarabs? This mummy is still juicy, Niles. Niles. <laughs> All right. And with that, let's go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll get into some news. Hey, we're back. That was uh, Roundabout by Yes, because Jojo. I was going to say, is that a Jojo reference? Yes. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) All right. So, hey, let's go ahead and get into some of this news. Oh, man, no second noise. I was expecting it. No second yeah. noise. Well, you know, I can't play it. I can't play a second noise every single time because then it gets stale. You got to keep, I got to keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of this stuff. So I guess the big news this week or this weekend are the uh, two new game consoles, the um, Xbox Series X and the PS5. They both released this past Thursday. Is that correct? I believe so. At least this week. They came out this this week. week. Sometime this (laughs) week at least, yeah. So what have you guys Uh, heard about them? I know I, everything I know about it has been second and third hand because I probably won't be getting one anytime soon, if at all. But uh, yeah, what, what what have you guys heard? This has been a weird console launch for me because usually, you know, I'll get excited and want to buy one of them. But for some reason this time around, I just... I just don't care. Nothing about them is is exciting me to make me want to purchase either one. Well, for one thing, there's no real killer app for this. There's no real yeah. like launch title game that everyone has to go out and play. Like when the Switch launched, it had it didn't have many games, but it had Breath of the Wild and that was that was it. That was the game everyone had to play. There's really nothing I can think of that is coming exclusively to either of these uh, new systems that isn't already going to be playable on the previous systems. And uh, I don't know. I've heard these two game systems be compared to the um, iPhones, how, uh, you know, how the ha- halfway in between each major uh, numbered uh, revision of the phone, there's like an X or an S, like the halfway point. That's the way I've heard these systems kind of compared, that they're just kind of a weird halfway points yeah i I guess i can see that like don't get me wrong they are hardware wise they are they are pretty powerful like i was reading about like the like the processing power and stuff on them and they're like unless you probably have like a i don't know like a brand new motherboard like a like like fresh off the factory they're getting pretty close to being almost up there with pc gaming i was yeah that was the other thing i was going to mention these at what point do new game consoles become just lackluster pc towers are they just pcs I mean, that can do less i think they just they just got there yeah okay <laughs> and like i'll admit it is time for new consoles i mean the ones we have are starting to feel pretty long in the tooth sure 
But if but they really they got to have that killer app. They have to have that killer app and if there's no I mean I know there are graphical increases and there's processing power increases between the PS4 and the PS5 or the um Xbox One X S and the what Xbox Series X which oh it's a mouthful a confusing confusing mouthful but if there's not that much of a difference graphics wise or uh processor wise then it's not worth putting six hundred dollars down for a marginal difference in gameplay yeah they both came standard with solid state hard drives which was already leaps and bounds over what they did before right but it's they made it very you know relatively easy or not i guess maybe not easy but it's more doable now than before to just mod a system yourself so you could just pop in a solid state drive into one of your other systems into one of the older ones yeah so i guess i just i still just don't understand like why couldn't they well, i mean i know why they couldn't wait another six months until there was an actual like a real game that's gonna blow the roof off of people and it's because it's the holiday season. They got to put something out. They can't wait six months. They have to put something out by Black Friday. Yeah. Like, it's like, it'd be one thing if, say, like, like say that Miles Morales only came out on the, on the five. It might have been something different. That would have been different. That would have been different. But they're not going to cut their oh, nose no, off yeah. when it comes to the holiday sales because... The other thing we're we're finding with these, I've been seeing reports on with these uh, systems, is they are increasingly difficult to get your hands on. <laughs> it almost seems as though they under under manufactured them, like both oh, both of I, them. I'm sure they did it on purpose. They well, always do, and that's and I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand that. It's it's not like they're going to benefit from the secondhand speculator market. Right, like, and they already got the. Heat. They don't have to build the the heat on them. Yeah, like, video games are popular enough now that people are gonna want the new thing, regardless uh, if there's like some weird scarcity hype. Games are popular. Consoles are popular. What else are we gonna do right now? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. there's, I mean, there's not a whole lot of options right at this very moment. But I just don't understand, like. Whether they print, they make a thousand PS. I mean, this is just ballpark numbers. I'm this is nowhere near what they actually did. But it doesn't matter if they made a thousand PS fives or ten thousand PS fives. When they sell it, they're still going to sell them for six hundred dollars a piece. So, what is creating a false scarcity really doing other than taking emboldening scalpers to turn around and flip it? for funds that the uh standard Sony's so, well yeah. that Sony's that Sony and Microsoft aren't going to see. I've already seen people peddle in PlayStations for 900 bucks. Yeah, and for the discless one. And that's ridiculous. So I I I guess I don't understand. I you know what leave me with my with my rinky dink wind up switch. <laughs> I know the graphics aren't the best, but dog on it they're Boy. trying. And I, and I'm about ready for a new switch though, to be honest, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> when these new consoles get going and we start seeing more and more of it, it's going to make the switch look just progressively stankier. Well, yeah, but at least the switch has the portability option. Yeah. So I think they get at least a little bit of a pass with that. But yeah, I would say this time next year when the hype is down on PS5s and uh, Xboxes and S Nintendo's really the only game in town with a new one. They'll put out a, a Switch Pro or what I'd like to think they're going to call it a Switch Heavy because they put out the <laughs> Switch Lite. I, I yeah, <laughs> I would I would like the Switch Heavy. The Switch the, U, the Super Switch Chunk Edition, the, the thick Switch. <laughs> so the Switch with two C's. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, I I got all the way through No More Heroes and have started the second one, and they're just both so good. Oh, good, good. I've been. I know, holding I, know off. I said that last time we did a show, but 
they're so good. Buy th- buy these games. Yeah, it, I I've been holding off on them for right now, but uh, I will pick them up sooner rather than later because they do look really good. They look like a lot of fun. The first one is is better than the second one by a pretty wide margin, but they're both good games. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the third one. Yeah, it's gonna be real good. Yeah. Speaking of things that are released or going to be released soon to wide wide appeal, R- McRib's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's not back now. It's going to be coming back soon, like within the next month or so, I believe. I don't think I will there will get you an exact date. Yeah, get me an exact date because uh yeah, I <laughs> Because it's in my search history. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. It's December 2nd. December 2nd. Okay, so we have a couple weeks. A couple weeks to uh, to gear up for the McRib. And listen, 2020 n- needs something. If the McRib is what's going to save 2020, I, I welcome it. Yeah. Because it's been what? A couple, it's been a couple years. It's been a, it's been a grip since we've had a McRib. Oh, it feels like it. Yeah, it was. It's it's not a yearly thing. It's like it's been a while. I need that rendered pork meat pressed into the shape, <laughs> uh, the general shape of a rack of ribs. <laughs> mm. I always get the onions taken off though. I don't like. Oh them. yeah, I'm you don't. For their their uncooked raw onions on it. No, thank you. Yeah, no, no. I agree. I agree. I was gonna say, if only there were some kind of. Uh, Flintstones movie to tie in with the McRib because I, that's the first time I don't know if that was the first time they made the McRib but that's the first time I remember there being a McRib because they're like hey get your Flintstones live action movie glasses along with yeah. your McRib because hey remember the intro to the Flintstones there there's yeah, a I rib want, in there I want them to bring me out a McRib so big it tips my car on its side <laughs> Wow. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm 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 on the wiki for the McRib. The McRibby the wiki? M- <laughs> <laughs> the McRicky. Yep. Uh it's been around since nineteen eighty one, I guess. Eighty one? Wow. That predates the Flintstones live action movies. It by at least ten years, yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess. That they introduced it when the price of pork was very low. <laughs> when they got a good deal on a lot of cheap pork. Pork or <laughs> pork byproduct, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this always reminds me of that Simpsons episode where uh, the uh, Homer was chasing the, uh, was it the McCrusty crusty rib sandwich or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um and Crust and they Crusty had to like follow the come out to the crowd and say, "This is it. There's there's nothing left. The animal that we that we used to to create the uh, the Crusty rib, uh, it's gone extinct." <laughs> Homer asks him, "What you mean, like pigs?" He goes, "No, think smaller, think more legs." <laughs> uh, let's see here. It was removed in 1985. It was brought back in 1989, 1990, 91, 92, 93, 94. Uh, they brought it back nationally for the Flintstones movie. There it is. There it is. I want to say it's been at least four or five years since we've had the McRib. Well, jump ahead to the most recent McRib. Oh, God, there were a bunch of farewell tours from, like <laughs> 2000, from 2007 to like 2008. Oh, 2009. And celebration of London Olympics 2012. Oh, no, it was Australia and New Zealand for the McRib. That, well, that doesn't count because I'm, I'm talking uh, I'm talking U.S. national McRib times. McDonald's announced that the McRib's annual release was delayed until December 17th, 2012. Okay. Oh, uh, oh that's the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm seeing 2017. Yeah. 2017. Okay. Limited was made limited return in the United States and Australia in participating locations in October of 2018. Okay, so it's been a couple yeah. years then. Yeah. That that feels right to me. Okay. All right. 
my question is, when are they going to bring back the McPizza? There's that one McDonald's in I know, Ohio there's where that you can one. still get it. I know we and I when when the troubles are over, I'm probably I'm going to drive down and get a McPizza. Man, I used- we have to make a road trip of it. Yeah, I'll go down to get a, a Mc a McCheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I uh I used to eat the McDonald's pizza all the time. And that's what I I would exclusively eat the Mc, the McDonald's pizza when I was a my kid. My mom hated it. My oh yeah. She said every time I ate it, it made my breath smell so bad. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but that's what she said. <laughs> and I barely remember it. That was also back in the day of like, you know, Pizza Hut paying pizzas and getting X Men VHS tapes. <laughs> I still have one of those X Men VHS tapes. Night of the Sentinels uh-huh. Part One. They only released two of them. Yeah. I have the Pride of the X Men. That's something worth hanging short. on to. Yeah, that one's that one's hard to come by. That one's yeah, that one's a collector's. Or or reading enough or reading enough books to get your free pizza or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, yep. Get some uh some book it. McRib consists of a reconst- a restructured boneless pork patty. Meat restructuring was developed by the U.S. Army. To deliver low-cost meat to troops in the field. <laughs> Patriotic. Yeah. Oh, so, man. Support the troops with the McRib. So you're saying the McRib <laughs> tastes like America. Yeah. Yes, exactly. There's <laughs> <laughs> probably a little more truth to that than uh, than we'd all like to admit. But anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Calling, calling anything that Donald's has meat, I feel like, <laughs> constitutes possibly, like, you know, Lying under oath or something. <laughs> Listen, yes, the we know. The process we... was refined by a Natick Army Labs meat scientist, Dr. <laughs> Roger Mandingo. Oh, now you're making that up. No, I'm not. That's his name. <laughs> That's his name. Wow. Or no, Mandigo. Mandigo. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Mandingo, meat scientist. <laughs> <laughs> and this Good is... night, everybody. <laughs> Let's move oh. on to other news. Let's we've, move on. Yeah. The McRib mines bear. <laughs> I didn't Are, put this on the list, but they did announce that they're bringing uh, Tiny Toon Adventures back. Really? What? Yes. They That's... haven't. They they don't have a trailer, and all they had was like a concept art drawing of Buster and Babs. But it's a thing. Hey, that's excellent. Is it? Does it? Is it in the same vein as the uh, Animaniacs reboot? Do you? Th- because yeah, that's those... what, that's the vibe I got. Okay, that's well then they're on the right track. It was just like a tweet. So <laughs> Well, that's that's awesome. Tiny Toons was amazing. Introduced me to uh they might be giants. That's true. <laughs> Everything goes down the hole. Everything goes down the <laughs> hole. Yep. Oh yeah. I always felt like I always felt like the Animaniacs were kind of like the the point where Tiny Toons was trying to get to. Yes. And like to have them both exist simultaneously is is kind of weird. It but it's it's fine. It's yeah, I'm okay with that. It's but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like another year in the in like the creation box and Tiny Toons would have been Animaniacs. Like yeah. it it was heading that direction. But also Tiny Toons was made back when like Looney Tunes and everything was still well, it had that Ultra resurgence. Adults. Yeah, it had that resurgence because of the. Um, was it around Space Jam? It was I before Space it was. Jam. It was before Space Jam. Because I know there was a there was a big resurgence in like the very early like eighty nine ninety, and then it had a uh, Looney Tunes had another resurgence around Space Jam, and Space Jam was like ninety four, I think. That's that sounds right. Yeah, I would have probably been about. Um, the third grade, I think. That would have been 94, yeah. Because uh, I remember 94. doing, um, I believe I can fly for a school musical. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> but also back then, Warner Brothers had, like, you know, Warner Brothers stores. Oh, man, I always loved going in the Warner Brothers store. Me too. But again, they don't really have uh, <laughs> cultural relevance anymore. Do you remember the Warner Brothers uh, catalog? That oh, you can yeah. get sent? No. Yes, it was a thing. And I and I remember this, not because we had it, but because there was an ad 
on the VHS before uh, the Michael Keaton Batman, the first Batman movie. It was Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny talking about, hey, you can get your new starter jacket from from the Warner Brothers magazine. Just call oh. this 800 number and order yours today. You got to yeah. have a sweet starter jacket. You it's got 1995. to. Heck yeah. <laughs> Also, Space Jam was 1996. 96. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. That'd be weird with, like, if Tiny Toons came back. Like, it's great yeah. for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with it. I mean, I feel like a lot of cartoons I loved as a kid are kind of, like, making comebacks in a way. Because a lot of the creators that of of shows and people that, you know, have worked their ways up in are you know the production show production that sort of thing are our age and are remembering hey remember that thing i liked when i was a kid let's make more of that thing yeah oh yeah like animaniacs coming back now tiny tunes apparently yeah let's bring back batman, batman yeah. the animated series yeah let's bring guys and bruce tim yeah well you know what else they're they're thinking about trying to bring back walker texas ranger uh. this is true yeah, they uh, did release that trailer. Yeah, and, and it's it, got one of those supernatural boys. It's it's got one of the supernaturals, and oh, oh boy, hold on to your ten gallon hat because <laughs> it. I bet that guy can't even do a roundhouse. What's the point of doing Walker Texas Ranger if you can't do a freaking roundhouse? <laughs> was he tra- Was he trained by Bruce Lee? I doubt it. I doubt it. Like, My listen. If Jared Padalecki did do a roundhouse kick, it would be terrifying because the man's like eight feet tall. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. Well, one, he's yeah, all, and two, he's all arms and legs. If they wanted to do a down south cop show, great, more power to him. There's plenty of stories they could tell, but Chuck Norris is Cordell Walker. He is Walker Texas Ranger. It's just ah, mm. it's like casting <laughs> yeah. someone as Mister T in something <laughs> like, like it's like the pictures and not B.A. Baracus. I mean, Mr. T. <laughs> hey, they're rapper common. You are now Mr. T. <laughs> Doesn't work. Just give Winona Earp another season. Yeah, exactly. Instead. Yeah. And like this that show is th- pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it <laughs> is. Uh, but like this Walker, Texas Ranger thing, it's it's not going to have that goofy level of just outside of believability melodrama attached to it. And they're going to try to ground it and they're going to try to make it not stupid. Walker, Texas Ranger was stupid. Have you ever got, have you guys gone back and watched it recently? It was, well, I, I watched it. I've seen all the clips that Conan would play on, on uh, late night when he had the lever. There's a reason why he had a million different clips <laughs> because that show was rock stupid, but that's what made it fun. <laughs> And it was the, almost seemed like it didn't know how stupid it was, too. And that was the magic of it. It was yeah. It was it was so dumb that it wrapped back around to become endearing. This show, they're probably going to have like a season long arc with like it's not a episodic show like the original show was, and <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna give the characters like actual characterization and like. <laughs> wants and goals they're gonna try to make them three-dimensional characters a texas ranger named walker is not a three-dimensional character <laughs> he's gonna be like who killed my brother strider strider walker strider walker the last uh. king of gondor <laughs> <laughs> uh. played by vigo mortensen <laughs> <laughs> no they would they would get the other guy from from uh oh uh, Jensen Nichols. Yeah, whatever his name is. Supernatural two. <laughs> I don't know. And among and the the Luigi, the supernatural Luigi. I mean, like one's Mario and one's Luigi, right? Oh, well, yeah, but I guess if this guy is like ten feet tall, like like Josh has said, this guy may very well be the Luigi. <laughs> I mean, that's you're... even worse. <laughs> yeah. Right. Jared Padalecki is is the Luigi of Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you remember when they tried to bring back MacGyver? It's like a similar situation. You can't bring uh, back MacGyver. Not in this day and age. In they this economy. Back MacGyver. It was called Magoo, uh, MacGruber. MacGruber. <laughs> there was a long talk about Upper Deckers, and I don't want to bring it up on the show. 
But like, yeah, I watched the first episode of the new MacGyver. I was like, okay, I'm going to give this thing a shot because I have nothing. I have an hour to kill. <laughs> How's he going to get out of this one? <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, in the realm, in, in, in the day and age where we have cell phones and things of that nature, like modern technology, MacGyver doesn't matter anymore. MacGyver doesn't count <laughs> to a lesser extent. Same with Knight Rider. <laughs> oh my God, there's a computer like... in the car. What a novel concept. <laughs> I feel like every new MacGyver would be like, well, I took my phone and then I made this out of it. Yeah. <laughs> M- Modern MacGyver is an app developer. <laughs> I use the flash on my phone light bulb to light this on fire and then we're free. Yeah. Or if there just happens to be a cell phone jammer in every situation in the new MacGyver. It's like, oh, man, I'm trapped in this burning building with only with only toothpaste and and a little bit of flint and my cell phone. Oh, a dip, a beans, a cell phone jammer. Can't use that. Like the bad guy would just be a guy who sells cell phone jammers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what, so what we're saying is, hey, hey, MacGyver, let us come right for you. We have some ideas. <laughs> well, it's like if you go back and like look at old TV shows, like like me and Nicole were talking about this like like yesterday or the day before. Like we were talking about like Seinfeld. Take a show out of its like antiquated element. A lot of the storylines and stuff don't make sense anymore. So, <laughs> like, Sein- well, like the said- X Files. The X Files. Those would be one. like, yeah, I saw an alien here. I took a picture of it with my phone. Yeah, exactly. What do you think of that? What do you think of that, Scully? Hey, smoking man, <laughs> choke on this. <laughs> but yeah, well, like like we said on the last episode that we did, Seinfeld. Every situation in Seinfeld is solved by a cell phone and people talking to each other. That's it. Case closed. <laughs> Hello. Now, thanks to COVID, every TV show I watch feels like it's in an alternate reality. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like always like, oh, they shouldn't be standing that close. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry and George are sitting in a booth next to each other? That close? They went out to a, they went out to a restaurant? Oh, they're, God, that's the, irresponsible. <laughs> they're yelling in each other's faces without a mask? <laughs> Can you imagine the spit episode? being done today oh nasty. It, at least the mandalorian doesn't take his mask off hey mandalorian has the right idea <laughs> <laughs> all right and the way. that is the way and i'll tell you what with that let's go ahead and wrap things up for the week you've been listening to nerd overload thank you very much for tuning in you can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. You can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. And you can give us a call on the Nerd Overload hotline. Uh, The number is 586-372-8020. Leave us a voicemail and we might play it on the show. What old TV show would work the worst if they reboot it? Just the absolute worst? Yeah. That's kind of a high concept one, but... But I believe in you. Yeah. Okay, you know, we have a minute. Let's let's go round robin. Pick one. I'm going to say, well, first thing that came to mind was Manimal, but actually Manimal would work so much better. <laughs> oh, this is a tough one. I feel like the, the $6 million man, um, yeah. because of inflation, he'd be pretty <laughs> crappy. He would, yeah. They'd, have, they'd shove like a Betamax in him or something. Actually, with, with with healthcare the way it is, that's just like he'd just have like a regular operation for that much. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he'd come out the same, maybe a little worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. And uh, yeah, you can find all of our back episodes on various podcast apps such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. And finally, I'd like to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff over at davidpencil.com. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Peace out. <laughs>